Hey everybody, welcome to Watts Weekly. This is going to be a little bit of a, a tour through my history at uh, Watts Atelier with, uh, with my pad of drawings here. So I've got this big box in front of me and this is full of about 400 drawings. Um, we probably won't go through all of them uh, today. In fact, this will probably be a multi-part Watts Weekly. Uh, but what I wanted to go over is just kind of talk about uh, my drawings and show you a selection of drawings that uh, from the 25 years, 25 plus years that I've been here. Um, I've got about eight boxes like this, and those are just the drawings that I've kept. So uh, that tells you the kind of mileage that I've put into uh, drawing and teaching and uh, just trying to improve myself as an artist, technically. So uh, that being said, let's go ahead and uh, jump into this. So this first drawing here, this is a page of uh, bodybuilder legs, female bodybuilder legs. This was a demonstration from, uh, I can't remember if it was an online demo or an actual anatomy class, but one or the other. So this is uh, from basically from Bridgman. So what I used to do and what I still do is I, I'll go through uh, a bunch of like fitness uh, magazines and uh, websites and things like that, finding a reference that looks sort of like Bridgman's drawings. Now we've actually gone and photographed one of our models in all of the same poses as uh, as the Bridgman poses, we can get it exact, but this is before we were doing that. So these are just sort of random pictures that I found in bodybuilder magazines, fitness magazines, and uh, websites, uh, fitness websites. So that's what this is. Uh, this was a really good phase of drawing for me. Uh, it was when I really felt like I was, I was hitting my stride and uh, plateauing uh, at my drawing level. You know, it still goes up and down for the most part, but, but this is when I really felt like I had a good handle on drawing. Uh, it's good uh, control of values, uh, nice planar work. I kind of started to feel like I was coming into a style of my own that certainly is reminiscent of Jeff's, but uh, but you know I, I, I could start telling the difference. It didn't just look like a like a uh, lesser version of Jeff's drawings, but they kind of looked a little bit more like my own look. So I was really proud of this page of uh, of legs when I did it because, like I said, it it felt like it was more my own. It was a demo and it came out pretty good. So. Uh, just all around, I, I was pretty happy with that, and that's that's why this is in here. So, uh, just anatomy studies from photographs. This is a a head drawing demo from probably about if I had to guess about 15 years ago. Uh, this was when I really started pushing the idea of the two value, uh, emphasizing the two value block in in my demos, and getting away from uh, just really designerly mapping and getting students to focus on just what's lit and what's unlit. So there's a big emphasis on that. I mean, obviously it, it ended up more than two values, but this was early on when I, when I switched over to that mentality and it really helped me as an artist to think of that, that big two value design in the drawings. Um, and it worked out well, it's got, a good, it's got a good likeness, it's solid, you know, there's nothing flashy, but it's easy to understand uh, and easy to make sense of, which as a teacher in a demo, I think is very, very important. No matter how good your your drawing is in the demo, if it's confusing the students, it's not it's not a good demo. So it needs to not only be nice looking and solid, but also needs to make sense uh, very very quickly and uh, make the students feel like it's something that they can do and they can wrap their brain around. Here's just a fun page of five minute heads, uh, same model actually. Um, I don't think it's from the same day, but it may have been. I've drawn Van thousands of times so it would be uh, difficult for me to say you know when exactly this was done but it's a nice abstract page of of five minute heads uh, again this was an interesting phase in my drawing where I wasn't as reliant on uh, construction uh, I would say that construction is one of the main attributes and main characteristics of my drawing approach but I wanted to also get away from that and, and focus a little bit more on just really clear design so you can see that the heads aren't even really laid in. It's just shape, 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 which I think is a good exercise. And it's one of the things I like to do in quick sketches of any kind, quick drawings, is explore things a little bit and emphasize and isolate certain skills. So if I'm doing five minute drawings, I might focus just on design. I might focus just on construction. I might just focus uh, just on form. You know, whatever it might be, uh, I, I'll pick one specific thing to, to really lean on and the more you lean on one specific attribute of drawing or one specific characteristic of drawing, it really for, uh, forces you to address that and see where you stand with it. 
Whereas if maybe your construction isn't so good, if, if your design and observation is strong, then you can kind of mask the fact that your construction isn't all that great. But if you do just construction drawings, it starts becoming really clear if uh, you know what you're doing or not, especially in five minutes. Uh, this is what I called my, my clean phase. Uh, I really like this demo a lot, actually. Um, it was 25 minute demo. One of the first demos that I did where, where I thought it was just straight up a good drawing. Not a good drawing for 25 minutes, but just a good drawing and it's got dual lighting. Um, but this was definitely my, my clean phase where I was going much more direct with my shading, not quite so uh, designerly or textural, uh, not a lot of cross hatching like you might see in a lot of my drawings. And, and again, I like that cross hatching. It's, it's a look that I strive for and I prefer, but I, this is when I was getting away from that. Again, if you don't want to rely on anything as a gimmick too much. So sometimes taking something, even if you love doing it, removing that from your process to see how you do without it, handicapping yourself a little bit, uh, can be a good move. It, it's, it can be uncomfortable, but it can really generate some good growth so that then when you go back to, uh, or reincorporate that thing that you really enjoy, your drawings are much stronger underneath that. Um, so this is a, one of our models, Tori. Tori's great. Um, haven't had Tori mo model in a while and, and, uh, and I miss her, but she's a great model. So uh, this is another one of our long-term models, Stephanie. Stephanie's still around and modeling for us and, and she's great. Um, this again is, is kind of more that style that I'm a little bit more known for. Uh, heavy outlines, heavy design, um, lots of uh, uh, very clear pencil strokes and cross hatching in it. Uh, not really much to say about this drawing other than, than I like it. It's in here because, uh, because I like it. It's really spontaneous. And this is more of that range that, that I like to, to draw in. This isn't me really handicapping myself at all. This is me just going at it. But this is another 25 minute demo. Um, and it's a look that I really like. Uh, it's probably my favorite look of my drawings. Uh, so that's what I really enjoy. Uh, is this this is this is sort of my wheelhouse this is the kind of drawing that that I like doing uh, it's just sort of me showing off more than anything which I don't really like to do that too much in demos but it can be good as well because it's it serves as more inspiration so this is more at the end of the drawings where uh, I'm just showing people how I do what I do there probably wasn't a lot of verbalization in this demo it was just more of a pure visual demonstration uh, which like I said can be good it's inspirational it's fun uh, I remember seeing a lot of Jeff's drawings that, uh, you know, 30 years later, I can still remember watching them. I don't really remember uh, uh, much of what he said in some of them, but, I, but the visuals stuck with me. And then there's other demos that he said things that, that really changed the way I looked at art. So it just kind of depends. Some demos are more verbal instructional and they're nice, clean drawings, but nothing you're going to, you know, show off to anyone. And then other demos are, they're, they're a lot about showing off. It's a visual medium, and so you need to be able to demonstrate on a purely visual level as well. So here's more of those uh, Bridgman bodybuilder studies. So again, taking some bodybuilder arms that are close to what Bridgman was drawing from in his books, and I like to go back and forth. I'll do strong drawings from Bridgman, and then I'll do drawings from bodybuilders that are similar, or fitness models that are similar. Bodybuilders sometimes can be a little bit too much. So going back and forth and, and, and eventually blurring that line where it might be difficult to tell which is which. You're stealing from some of Bridgman to enhance the bodybuilder drawings. You're stealing from the bodybuilder drawings to enhance the Bridgman drawings. Uh, it's, just, it's a real interesting way to study that I, that I think, I'm pretty sure Jeff developed it. And it's a, it, it, some of my first drawings that I ever got on, uh, on the brochure here at the school were actually drawings that I did from the Bridgman drawings. So obviously there's something there that that stuck with me and, and I continue to do them to this day. Again, here's another drawing that's kind of more in that, that wheelhouse, that, that look that I'm known for a little bit more, where lots of directional shading, a, a little bit looser, really punchy in the values, uh, bordering on chaotic, but still making it work. So again, this is I like this drawing a lot for that reason, that it's, it's really in that wheelhouse of exactly what I'm going for in my drawings, where it's, it's walking that razor's edge between uh, harmony and diversity it's 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 pushing into that that chaos a little bit more but still managing to control it and that's that's how jeff refers to it often as controlled chaos and uh, and i like that i like that term a lot i like that phrase a lot because it really sums up what i like to see in my drawings if, it, if it's too clean it kind of bores me if it's too chaotic it falls apart so always trying to walk that boundary 
And uh, sometimes I'll do a demo again where I, where I want to demonstrate that to students that, that the, what we call the look, there's no real word for it other than the look. And people say, well, what's the look? It's like, can't, there's no other words for it. You'll, but you'll know it when you see it. It's a, it's a purely visual thing. Now here's one that's, that's really heavy on that chaos. This was a 25-minute demo. This was one of the first uh, figure drawing demos where I really managed to push a, it to a full value range and get, get something that was really punchy. Up until this point, I'd been kind of timid with my demos because I was afraid to make a mistake. I was afraid to screw up. And uh, at a certain point, I just, I just burnt out of that. And I wanted to push a little bit further and thought, well, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna keep teaching, I need to push beyond just this really fundamental phase occasionally and uh, and like I said show off a little bit you know be a little bit more inspirational and not so academic and I think there's a place for both and in a back then they were 10 week sessions and you could kind of build from very very academic at the beginning of the semester to eventually pushing it towards the end of the semester and showing people a little bit more of a of a finish or, or looking for just a purely aesthetic approach to drawing and not worrying about the fundamentals as much now with the five week sessions that's a little bit more truncated and it's, and it's more difficult to do but uh, I still do it. I try to build from very simple at the beginning of the semester, going over the fundamentals, gesture, structure, mass, and eventually at the end of the five weeks, you know, finishing off with some really punchy drawings. So here's another one from that phase that I was talking about where it's relying more on, on design uh, and observation and not so much on, on traditional construction, uh, just seeing how intuitive it is. And... Uh, I was really proud of this this page. In fact, there's even some decent likenesses in it. Uh, this was Morgan uh, Morgan Black, another one of our uh, long-term models who I haven't seen in a while, but uh, hopefully we'll get her back in. And there's a longer drawing of Morgan. Again, I don't know if those are from the same day or not, but uh, there's a that, that's a demo from Morgan. Again, uh, this one's kind of in that in that middle range. It's it's certainly got some some punchier drawing and and some. Uh, some interesting charisma to it, but it's also very solid, very well structured, and you can even see some of the, the structure lines still showing through. So, again, it, 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 demos can rain, run the gamut. You know, it all kind of depends on sometimes it's just reading the classroom and reading the students that are in there and, and teaching to their ability level, and sometimes it's just setting a curriculum and sticking to it, starting very simple at the beginning and building towards complex at the end. Here are some really fun drawings. I think these were probably like uh, like tens or something like that. When I would teach the twenty minute figure lands class, sometimes people don't need too much help at the beginning of the sitting. They want you know they need to mess some stuff up before you can come over and help them. So what I would do is, in the first ten minutes of a sitting, I'd sit down and do one of my own drawings, and then in the second ten minutes, the second half of the sitting, I would walk around and, and help students. And so this would be like the first five ten minutes of uh, of a twenty minute session. Uh, over the course of class, usually you get four or five sittings. And so this was probably four sittings where I would sit down and just kind of draw for myself and wait for someone to need help. These are some, I believe, some five minute quick sketches. I don't know why there's only three of them. Um, maybe I had to go to the restroom towards the end of the sitting or something, who knows. Um, but yeah, these are, these are really nice. They've got a nice energy, um, nice gesture. That's one of the big things that you're always looking for in your quick sketches is a, is a nice gesture and nice, nice movement, but they're still solid and tonal as well. Uh, so I don't have too much to say about these other than, you know, it's just a page that, that I liked the look of and it was a more tonal style that uh, I wanted to get some of those uh, set aside as well. So more, more from that era. Uh, it, was a, it was a quick sketch era that I really liked a lot. Uh, sometimes I'd goof around and do weird little skull heads and such. Uh, never, don't forget to have fun. It's something that I always, I'm always really trying to remember to do in my own work is that don't let it become a drudgery. You know, sometimes doing bad drawings isn't the most fun thing in the world, but you need to remember that the reason you got into drawing and painting in the first place is because it's fun. So, so keep it fun and have a good time with your, with your drawing. Goof around a little bit. Don't take it too seriously. Don't slack off and, and be a goofball either, but, you know, remember it's supposed to be fun. This is probably from that, from that same phase as well where I was getting, starting to get a little bit gutsier, but underneath it is still just a nice clean drawing, but going in a few places and pushing some darker values probably towards the end, end of the demo. You know, it's starting to experiment with some uh, stronger design, losing some edges, having some fun with, with contour. Again, just a really nice, uh, nice drawing. This was Pam. Pam was, 
one of our uh, top models for a long time. In fact, she booked models for us for for years and years and years. She's uh, since sadly passed away, but she was a she was a wonderful lady and and, a, and an excellent excellent model. Drawing a blank on this model, my no, it wasn't Silk. I can't remember this model's name right off the top of my head, but he was he was a good model as well. Really interesting, really fit. Um, one of those triple 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 threat models. It was great quick sketch, great head model, great figure. Um, this is again during that aggressive phase where I was really trying to push myself to to break through. Like I'd been to school probably about five years at that point, uh, five six years, and I was really starting to get aggressive with my drawings and pushing myself and trying to uh, stomp out that that fear and timidity that I found in my drawings. Uh, and again, I flubbed a lot of drawings during that phase, but I, I had to do it to break through. And sometimes you have to do that as an artist, is just really start to uh, break through and not be afraid of screwing things up. So again, here's one of those, another one of those drawings from that phase, you know, really nice and clean, nothing wrong with it at all, but, but not, you know, at the same time, not the most exciting thing in the world. You know, nice and simple, good proportions, good gesture, good two-value design, but uh, yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing too too flashy in it by any means. It's certainly nothing too too gutsy. Just really walking the students through the process and uh, trying to provide a uh, a good a good example for them. Uh, here's again a, a simpler uh, phase of quick sketch that I was going through. This is when I was looking a lot at uh, Glenn Orbick stuff. Uh, phenomenal, uh, phenomenal draftsman and J one of Jeff's main teachers. And he had a really rhythmical, simple style of quick sketch that was super, super beautiful. And, uh, and I'm still enamored with them. And this was a phase that I was going through where I was really pushing that look. Uh, I can't remember how long ago that was exactly, but probably 12, 13 years ago, something like that. Um, so I was just kind of constantly looking for new things to try and help me push my drawings to that next level because you're not always sure what that is. So sometimes you just have to go down a side street, um, similar to evolution. You know, sometimes you it, you go down a side street and it, and it dead ends and doesn't go anywhere. So it's it's kind of the same way. And it basically, basically it is evolution. You're evolving as an artist. And so sometimes you you send off uh, down a path and try some stuff and it doesn't it doesn't work out. And then you branch off another path and it does. And slowly over the course of, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, your drawings evolve into what you want. It's not natural selection. It's, it's artistic selection uh, on your part. But uh, it's still the same basic idea. This was, a, this was a really nice phase that I was going through. Again, probably that, that around that same time. So some of these are kind of in groups I'm noticing a, a little bit. So again, lots of, lots of really flowing linear lines. Uh, reminiscent of uh, of Glenn Orbick stuff, so this was definitely that phase, and he always composed his five minute heads really nicely on the page as well. So I, I'm sure that this was during that that phase that I was looking at his work and studying it a lot, and I still go back and do that from time to time. But uh, yeah, that was definitely dur during that phase a really simple but but beautiful. And when I say simple, I don't mean simple in 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 simple to do. It's simple in trying to remove as many things from the process you can and just really boil it down to what you want in your drawings. So again, here's another one of those drawings that is a little bit more what I'm known for, what people see a lot of in my work. And that's that really kind of aggressive directional shading look to the drawings that, uh, that I, I'm definitely fond of and I would call it sort of my, my base camp. It's what I'm always going back to when I feel like I need to, to regroup. It's the, it's the way of drawing that I'm most comfortable with.